So when I get tempted to start thinking of, oh, maybe I should do more events, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that, I think about the one thing that has allowed me the opportunity to do anything else, and that is this podcast. That is the core of what I do. So I keep the main thing, the main thing, lay low and build. I wholeheartedly still believe in that. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey, hey guys, welcome, welcome back to the show. This is Nikayla here. For those of you who this is your first time listening to Side Hustle Pro, welcome, welcome. I know I got a bunch of new listeners after the Today Show. This is going to be a quickie episode. I know it's a late one. I usually release episodes on Wednesdays, but we're late with good reason. I am still recovering from the whirlwind of travel to New York City to be on the Today Show. Yes, I was on the Today Show. In case you didn't know, this past Monday, August 19th, 2019. How cool is that? Now, I'm sorry I didn't announce it in advance. To be honest with you guys, it just, it didn't feel real until I was actually there. And so that's when I shared it with everybody. And I think it worked out. You know, I like to do things as they're happening and not just talk about what I'm going to do, but actually do it. So I'm also now sharing it on the show. In case you guys missed it, I will link to it in the show notes. And I am interrupting the pre-scheduled program for August, which was the Side Hustle series. It's still going to go on. It's picking up next week. But I did want to bring you a quick Entrepreneur Diaries update. I figured rather than wait until my next scheduled Entrepreneur Diaries episode, which I do those once a month, why not just pop in here and share my raw feelings before they fade away? So that's exactly what I'm doing. I am still on this high. So let's go. Here's what's going on. And here's how I'm feeling about it all. It's honestly still very, very surreal, um, especially to see the Today Show pull together that opening montage, that highlight reel of how I came to launch Side Hustle Pro and grow it to a point where I could leave my job, that was amazing. Nikayla Matthews Okome is a hustler. Well, at least on the side she is. She is the creator and host of the wildly popular podcast, Side Hustle Pro, which teaches entrepreneurs how to grow their side passions into profitable businesses. During her struggle to find a new job, Nikayla started a blog with one goal in mind. I'm gonna think of it as a business and also wanted to attract employers. Her blog consisted of interviewing women of color about their side hustles. And while she was working to perfect her formula, Nikayla's mantra was, fake it until you make it. So I'm like, maybe if I start branding myself as this expert, it'll work. Seeing sluggish traction with her written word, Nikayla shifted the blog to a podcast. I drop these articles on Facebook, people are just liking it. I'm like, I know you didn't read that that quick. So people are not reading these articles. And I wanted to give justice to these stories. Finally, she landed a job. I saw the package, as they call it, for the first time, along with all of you guys, all of the hosts and all the viewers at home. And although I had gone back and forth with the Today team, sending them photos and videos and talking about, you know, giving them whatever they requested, but that final package was still a surprise to me. And here's why. They wrote the script. They decided how to tie parts of my story together as they saw it and weave in the right pictures at the right time and the right sound bites from my recent speaking engagement at Summit 21. And they did a beautiful job. I was floored. I was floored. They even went back to my Instagram feed and pulled in photos that we hadn't exchanged and we hadn't discussed. And they even listened to my episodes and took screenshots of some of my guests and again, weaved it all in. So as I was watching, it was a bit of an outer body experience because remember, I was watching someone else talk about me and my story. I'm used to being the one telling my story, but to see this real plane and knowing that it's playing on national TV, my parents are watching, everyone's watching and hearing somebody else's voice narrate my story was crazy. My heart was pounding and I was beaming with pride as well because I'm like, dang, I remember that moment. I remember where I felt like a loser, like I didn't know what I was going to do next. And look where it was all leading to. How crazy is this? And at that moment, I just had to praise God right before the interview started. So then the interview began. 
Oh, and we're all smiling. Nikayla's yes. with us today. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. What was going through your mind when you decided? Because NPR is a great, you know, great Absolutely. position. But yep. to walk away from that, what gave you the umph to do it and try this? You know, when you're really passionate about your own business, after a while you reach that point where you have to make a decision because you can either keep going and only achieve this level of results or what would happen if you committed to it 100% full time. So I reached that point where I just had to make the leap. Yeah, but how do you push past the fear? Because I think so many people have like these great ideas, like maybe they come to them in the shower, like, yeah, and you get excited, but then you get to that wall and you're like, well, hold on, how, how do I do this? And then you start the, maybe the negative talk to okay. convince yourself uh, that perhaps, you know, you're not gonna be able to do it. Where, where, do you, where did you find that passion? So first of all, I took my time before making the leap. So that's why I really emphasize side hustling because side hustling gives you the confidence. Once you're able to test and use your full-time income to invest in your side hustle, and then I was able to start making revenue and see that happen consistently over time to a point where I knew I could trust myself to replicate these results after I left. So then with that confidence and savings, savings is key. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> you can't take the risk without right. the savings. You yeah. can't take the risk yeah. without the savings. So, well, I want to know, Nikayla, first of all, your energy is phenomenal. Oh, you. you talk about the side hustle and you're pursuing your passion. How do you know, though, whether that passion is worth pursuing in terms of whether you really can convert it mm. into something where you can support yourself. Absolutely. So that's where research comes in. A lot of us, we have these ideas and, you know, we just think it's the best thing ever, like you said. <laughs> However, we have to look at the demand. Does and anyone else want you may be wondering, Nikayla, how did this all come about? Do you have a publicist now? Did you pitch yourself? How did you go from having a podcast to being on the Today Show? Well, let me just break down a little bit about how it came to be and then also what my thoughts are about, you know, why they may have reached out to me. So a producer by the name of Sean reached out to me back in June. Shout out to Sean. Thank you. I really, really can't thank you enough for the opportunity. So I get an email and it says, Hi, Nikayla. My name is Sean and I'm reaching out because I've become a fan of your work and the stories you're telling with your podcast and other platforms. And we at the show are interested in doing something with you. What? <laughs> That's it. That's all. I mean, the email went on to explain that they were doing a passion to paycheck week, interviewing different side hustlers each week, and they would like me to kick off the week. So, of course, you know, the next thing I did was go to good old Google to, you know, look up my boy Sean by his first and last name to see if this was real or if someone was pranking me. Because, yes, that is how my mind works. But he was real. I found him on LinkedIn immediately. This was a real person. This was legit. was not a joke. And that is how this experience all began. From there, you know, we exchanged endless emails. We got on the phone a few times. We had a pre-interview. All of that good stuff. And no, I don't have a publicist. Yet, I'll say yet to that because I still plan to work with one eventually when I feel like the time is right for me. But I don't have a publicist. I didn't pitch myself for this opportunity. It came about because of me doing the work. And there's this video from one of my earlier guests, C.C. She's a YouTuber and she talks about just do your work. You know, when you're tempted to be distracted or just looking at what other people are doing or what they got going on, just do your work. She repeats that over and over in the video. And I think of that when I think of this experience, because it was one of those moments where they found me because I was just doing the work. That's what I was doing. I always talk about I like to lay low and build. And that is really what I like to do. I pop up every now and again. You'll see me at a speaking engagement. But really, I like to keep the main thing the main thing. LeBron likes to say that a lot as well. It could be tempted, right? He is LeBron. He's doing these TV deals now. He's doing all this other stuff. But he keeps the main thing the main thing. He puts almost 90 percent of his energy into being an incredible basketball player. And that facilitates all of his other opportunities. So when I get tempted to start thinking of, oh, maybe I should do more events. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. I think about the one thing that has allowed me the opportunity to do anything else. And that is this podcast. That is the core of what I do. So I keep the main thing, the main thing, lay low and build. I wholeheartedly still believe in that. And I think when you marry hard work, consistency and clarity, the results will speak for themselves. Or as Miley Teal, founder of Curlbox, likes to say, they can't sleep on you forever. And I mentioned clarity here, along with hard work and consistency, because 
it is very important that you are known for something. So that's what the clarity piece is about. You have to get clear and you have to make it extremely clear for others. Ask yourself, what is the one thing that I want to be known for? Because people can only reach out to you for opportunities if they know what you do. They know what you are about and they know that you are a solid expert in that matter. So that's why it's so important to narrow down your side hustle, as I discussed in episode 159 and 160 of the Side Hustle series. Go check out both of those episodes. I know a lot of us are able to do different things, but when you narrow it down, you can focus all your energy and become excellent and known for that thing. If you want to be selected as an expert to be interviewed for articles or on TV, the one thing I know And this is just from my experience. I'm just sharing what has helped me. It's not from being any kind of publicist myself or TV consultant. But the one thing I know is that getting clarity around who you are and what you are known for will work wonders. That's the biggest piece of advice I would share from this experience. They brought me on as a side hustle expert because for the last three years, emphasis on three years, I'll get back to that in a second. So for the last three years, I have been hosting Side Hustle Pro Podcasts and interviewing women who scaled from passion to paycheck. My name now comes up in searches alongside the words Side Hustle. I have doubled down on my lane and what it is I want to be known for, and I'm also very passionate about it. I firmly believe that no one needs to jump out there as an entrepreneur before side hustling first. So not only have I become very knowledgeable, but I'm also very passionate about it. So think about that for yourself as well. That is my takeaway that I can share with all of you. Like not only what is it that you want to be known for, but whatever it is that you are starting, what is your long-term goal? If you're just starting a hobby for fun, right? Like let's say you're you're starting something around hair that just popped into my mind, but let's go with it. You're starting a brand around hair. If you don't want to be called on later in life to just always be talking about hair or matters related to beauty and hairstyles and all of that, then you have to analyze why am I starting this company or why am I going down this lane if I'm not truly passionate about this thing? So when you're narrowing down your side hustle, you can start to think about that too. Like, what is it that I want to be known for in three, five, 10 years? So let's talk about this three-year piece too before I get into the rest of the experience. But since Monday, I've especially been thinking about this three-year piece a lot because three years went by really quickly. And sometimes I worry that people see Side Hustle Pro success today and they really take that three years for granted. Like, I just want to make sure everyone knows that, yes, you can start your podcast. I want to help you start your podcast. I want to help you narrow down your side hustle. I want to help you flourish and market yourself. But I also want you to commit to doing something for three years. I want you to commit today because of the results you want in three years, not because of the results you want in 30 days or 90 days. I want you to commit because of the journey we're about to go on together because that's what it takes. You know, I've spoken to people before and actually I think it was my leak who says like, really, when you're doing something, it really takes you about three years to pop. And I really believe that because that's been my own experience as well. Like it's taken Side Hustle Pro about three years to pop. And I was still doing the work even when no one knows about it. Still, a lot of people don't know about it. So there's even more work to do, which is why I like to lay low and build. But I am positive that I would not be seeing things like the results I see today with with getting on the Today Show or being interviewed had I not been consistent and been willing to grind and hustle on it even when nobody was putting me on podcast lists and nobody was listening, nobody knew about the show, I was still doing the work as if like this is going to pop one day. So do the work, be consistent, get clear about who you want to be and also be willing to start today to see results in three years. Be willing to wait. So now I want to share a little bit about what it was like the week before right? That's when it actually started to feel real. And I said, okay, let me figure out what I'm going to wear. So I did a mad scramble to go shopping to find something to wear. I really need to do a better job, by the way, of shopping in advance in the event that something comes up rather than being stressed last minute. However, this is what occurred. So anyway, got that done. Then the night before I'm in New York and I absolutely did not sleep well at all. I listened to some sermons to pump me up And that's how I started to just try to like calm down my mind. 
I actually rewatched Sarah Jakes Roberts' Wild Woman Sermon from the Woman Evolve 2018 conference. Rewatched that on YouTube to get in my zone. I got to bed around midnight, but then woke up again at 2 a.m. and was just this ball of nerves. And even though I had a pre-interview with Sean, I attribute the ball of nerves to just the unknown of the experience. What would it be like? How would my outfit look on camera? Would I stumble over my words? You know, he'd gone through some of the potential questions, but I was still nervous because one, I've never been on live TV before. And two, I didn't know which of those questions would get picked. So I didn't know if I'd be ready in the moment to think of those answers. And again, I just wanted to represent myself well, make my parents proud. So didn't really sleep well. On the morning of, I was happy to just jump up when it was time for makeup. Um, Got my makeup done at home in Brooklyn at my parents-in-law's house. Shout out to Keys Rebel. Then a car picked me and Moyo up and drove us to the Today Show studio. Everyone was really nice, like from the driver to the security guards to the NBC pages. And of course, it was great to finally meet my producer, Sean, in person. Um, Once there, since I already had my makeup done and done my hair and was dressed, I just kind of fluffed and blotted a bit and, um, you know, tried to be calm still, then waited to be called. And then we were led onto the set. And Moyo got to be right on set, right behind the cameras, taking video and pictures of me. The hosts were so incredibly nice. So that day, Hoda and Jenna were on vacation and Chanel Jones was hosting along with Matt and Akbar of American Ninja Warrior. And it was such a fun team to be interviewed by. You know, how lucky am I that they were the ones hosting that day? I was watching backstage in the green room, watching them on camera and laughing at their interactions. And that put me at ease because I was genuinely laughing at them like, oh, they're silly. So by the time I walked on set, I felt super comfortable. And not only that, but during the commercial break before my segment, Akbar came over to shake my hand. He was excited because he had seen my Nigerian last name. He's also Nigerian. So he met me and Moyo and we talked for a little bit. I thought that was so nice. He didn't have to do that. And then I walked over and shook hands with Matt and Chanel as well. And Chanel and I have a few things in common. We are both AKAs and both of our husbands are Nigerians. So how funny is that? The Nigerian connection was strong. The, you know, things you have in common with people, you just never know. And Matt was also so lovely and warm. He told me I had a great smile. And during the interview, you'll see he also said I had great energy. And that, of course, just put me at ease. Such a warm greeting and and way to interact with me. So overall, it was just a great team to be interviewed by. And I'm forever grateful that that was my first ever TV experience. The segment went by really quickly. Under four minutes, I believe, maybe three max, two and a half. I don't know. I was happy with the questions. I felt comfortable answering them. I was so just pleased with how it all came out. And then as soon as it ended, you know, my mom sent me a text telling me how proud she and my dad were of me and how I represented myself well and looked awesome. And that's, I mean, that is like it, right? Like when you hear those words, like that's all you can ever ask for to know that you've made your parents proud. So it was just a solid ending to that moment. And then that was it. It was time to take off my mic and head on home. Afterward, Moyo and I had a celebration lunch. I spoke to the parents and fam and friends and just really sat in gratitude. So really quickly, here are some of my takeaways from this experience. Again, just become known for something. What do you want to be known for? It's easy for someone to recommend you or to come across you when you are known for something and when you are deemed as an expert of something. Also, what's yours is yours. It could be easy to look at someone else and say, oh, they're achieving this. Why am I not getting that experience? But actually, what's yours is yours. It's waiting for you, but you just got to get to work and start so you can get closer and closer to that. When people find you, they will find you. Again, I just couldn't believe that Sean found me and was listening to my podcast and he was just beyond professional You know, pitching is wonderful and it's still very valid and something I want to do in the future, but it is awesome. It does quell any anxiety and it just puts me at ease to know that when people want to find you, they will find you. Okay, so this also taught me um, or just reminded me a lot about what we're talking about this month during the Side Hustle series. Number one, just start. 
Y'all see how they showed pictures of my journey and the progress from my ugly blog to today? Like that start is going to be part of your testimony one day. So just go ahead and start so you can just picture the montage that you are going to have one day about your journey. Okay, those early days are going to be your testimony. Don't avoid them. Just start. Number two, keep going even when you can't see where it will lead. I feel a lot of times like I've been walking this path blind. I know I have goals and I know things that I want to achieve. Like, for example, I knew I wanted to work for myself, but I didn't know how all the pieces would come together. So again, seeing that montage and realizing that every single step forward is leading you somewhere, even if you can't see it, it was just such an important reminder. Again, they can't sleep on you forever. Don't worry who doesn't see you, who didn't invite you to their panel or to their event or what charts you're on or not on, just focus on your work. When you do good work, excellent work over time, they can't sleep on you forever. Keep the main thing the main thing. Don't be afraid to do one thing well. Do not be afraid to just narrow down and do that one thing well. Stop trying to do a lot of things at a mediocre level. Do one thing really well. Get good at that one thing and do not have shiny object syndrome where you're getting distracted by what everyone else has going on. Tell yourself this also, it might take you three plus years for this thing to pop. So I need to start now and I need to focus. Now, before I go, I'm going to do something a little unprecedented for this episode. I want to give some thank yous. I want to give some shout outs because this experience could not have happened without the following folks. So first of all, I want to thank Moyo, my husband, for loving on me and supporting me and encouraging me, especially when my mind is tempted to be overcome with worry. Thank you, babe. Um, I also want to thank all of you. Thank you for listening to this podcast and sharing because there would be no Side Hustle Pro if no one listened. So huge thank you to all of you for listening and for your support. I want to, of course, thank Sean from the Today Show for finding and reaching out to me and being so thorough. Let me tell you something. One thing I really appreciated was that I never had to tell him how to say or spell my name. And Sean, I know you probably might even be listening to this episode. So thank you. Um, You did your research. Sean was telling me sound bites from different episodes that I never had to point him to. I never had to say, oh, go check out this episode. He would tell me, oh, and I really liked when you said this or like you were talking about with this person. And I'm like, wow, you are going above and beyond. And I know that's, you know, oh, that's him doing his job. He's supposed to do that. But y'all, a lot of people don't do their jobs. I have spoken at conferences and my name has been spelled wrong in programs. People have been saying my name wrong and it kind of makes you feel bad as a speaker. So I really appreciate that. Like that little thing means a lot to me. I know I should just expect it, but it is not that common. (laughs) Okay. And I appreciate your level of professionalism and attention to detail, Sean. And so I also want to thank my editor, Chris, for the production of these episodes each and every week so that Side Hustle Pro episodes can get out the door. I want to thank my content and social media manager, Portia, for curating such awesome content on social media so that people who come to Side Hustle Pro can clearly see what the show is about, can take screenshots and use them in montages, (laughs) and for holding me down when I'm just exhausted and making sure that we still don't miss a beat. I want to thank the team at TED for interviewing me for the way we work and granting today's show permission to use the clips. I also want to thank the photographers that provided all the awesome images. Danielle Finney, Bola, a.k.a. Primo, Supremo, Rantine Dixon, Marcel Dutch, Mike D of Mike D Shot Me, and videographer Panique Singleton. And I also, of course, want to thank Chanel, Akbar, and Matt for being so kind, so gracious. Thank you to the entire Today and Hoda and Jenna staff. And big shout out and thank you to my friends Chidi and Nidia who texted me words of encouragement the day before because they know me and they knew I would be nervous as hell as I was. And those texts helped out tremendously. I actually took screenshots of them. So Chidi reminded me that you need nervous energy because it turns into sharpness and awareness once it's go time and that I would shine. And I really needed that reminder because sometimes As you guys have heard me say on this show, like, I get frustrated with my nervous energy. I'm like, why? Why do I have to feel this way before every single speaking engagement, before every single thing? Like, when is this going to go away, y'all? But she reminded me that it's needed. It's a natural human instinct, and you can fuel that into positivity. So once I read that text, 
it was the beginning of me being able to shift that energy into the calm energy that you saw on stage. And it's it's so ironic that Matt then said, you know, you have great energy because I use these reminders from Chidi and from Nidia to shift that energy. And Nidia reminded me of the words of my guest, Janice bryant Howroyd. So Janice, in her episode of Side House of Pro, says, knowledge married to experience breeds confidence. And Nidia said, you have the experience and knowledge, so own that confidence. And when she said that, it just clicked. And I actually listened to Janice's episode on the ride to the studio, and it really did give me confidence. I just tried to embody the words of Auntie Janice. And I would highly recommend you all listen to that episode if you haven't already. Whenever you need that boost of confidence and swagger, just scroll back to the episode with Janice bryant Harroyd of the Act One group. Alrighty? So I am saving my question cards with the Hoda and Jenna logo. I'm saving my card for the driver. I'm saving every single thing from that day. I will never throw away these closer shoes. <laughs> and of course, I am recording this episode so that I will never forget this feeling. So thank y'all for listening. In closing, I'll just say, God, you are good. And there you have it, guys. That's it. That's all. See you next Wednesday when we resume the Side Hustle series. 